publications are at the heart of impact, but coverage remains an issue when researchers are assessed based on impact factors across all academic disciplines. You know this well. If you are a humanities researcher, you're not going to be publishing your work in journals, even at all in some cases, but in journals that are listed in major databases like Scopus, for example. So humanities, business and law, social science colleagues often complain, and quite rightly so, about the fact that this impact factor-based metric is so important to universities and to funding agencies and to governments, yet they are under pressure and they can't often get access easily to journals that would have those high impact factors. We'll come back again and talk about this in a minute, but impact factor-based metrics, academic publishing, your impact, this is the key way initially that most of the assessment is done. So what is citation analysis? This, of course, is a way to measure the impact of an author, an article, or a publication by, of course, simply counting the number of times that article or publication has been cited by other works. How's it done? You might very well ask. Citation analysis tools, such as the ones that you see here on this slide, Web of Science, Scopus, Google Scholar, and ORCID. ORCID researcher IDs will also return to this topic a little bit later in our presentation, but these are ways that you can easily and quickly, without doing any work, really, without doing too much, making too much effort, you can get your impact enhanced. Sign up for an ORCID ID. It's a not-for-profit organization that's, that's providing identification numbers that are increasingly being used in journal submission systems. For example, Google Scholar is another good one, another common one. These online databases search other outlets where your academic work has appeared and collate for you your resume, your CV, in effect, keeping you updated on your academic impact, but also, just as importantly, keeping other international colleagues updated on what it is you're doing. I've sat on search committees, I've sat on hiring committees at universities, and often when we get applicants in for grants, for jobs, one of the first places that the hiring committee goes is Google Scholar to try to get some basic information about that particular candidate, what's their basic academic impact. So we need citation analysis as academics so we can understand who's citing our papers, who's using our work, who cited a particular article, what's the most cited paper in a particular subject area. And you can use these tools, of course, and journals. They use these tools all the time to determine their own ranking within a particular area, which are the best journals in a particular field. And as I've already just mentioned, of course, hiring committees, people on appointment committees at universities, they look at these metrics to justify their decisions and requests for funding. So if you're not participating in some of these social network-based metric accumulators like ORCID, like Google Scholar, to name just two of the main ones, then you probably should be in order to work towards maximum impact as a researcher. So it's very important to, to participate in these kinds of um, data accumulating systems. Citation analysis, of course, is very, very important. And we know we know that citation indexes track references in the bibliographies of published papers. Then this will provide a way to search and analyze the literature. And we use them all the time, of course, as well, to gather data as researchers on the impact of journals to assess particular areas of research activity and publications. How do we judge the quality of a colleague's piece of published work? We do this often by looking at the impact factors of the journals that they publish in, as well as their own H-index, 
R index and other kinds of citation metrics. So this is my starting point for our discussion today. Citation indexes and journal impact factors. Maybe you know this, maybe you're thinking this is easy stuff. Why is he going over the same things that I already know about? Well, it's important to recap, reiterate, look again at many of these issues we find in training courses often that people are, you know, often people are unaware of some of the basic nuts and bolts that lie behind, for example, how journal impact factors get calculated. Here is how the impact factor of a journal is calculated. The number of articles published in that journal in the last two years. Um, and then you divide that into the number of citations in those two years, in the years subsequent to those two years that indicate the journal from 2007, for example, and 2008 as the source. This is how impact factors get calculated. Here's an easier way of visualizing that if you're interested in understanding this in a little bit more detail. Don't worry um, if I'm speaking too much or if there's too much text on these slides. Everybody attending this presentation, everybody that's registered for this presentation today will get access to a video, a recording of our presentation this evening. And of course, our team, our colleagues will be very, very happy to talk to you if you have any questions or any follow up from this presentation today. So citation analysis, journal impact factors used, as you can see here, field weighted citation impact plotted over time. We are increasingly reliant as researchers, as academics, as funding agencies on measuring, on quantifying academic impact. Like it or not, countries around the world are still using these metrics as a measure of academic quality, academic impact. And I emphasize the word academic impact because of course that is actually only half the story. What is your research impact? What is the, what is the impact that your research makes? And we like to think about it like this. I encourage you to think about your impact like this as well. And I encourage you to start to think about how you can quantify, how you can count, how you can assess your impact as a researcher. Because of course, academic impact is only half the story. What difference are we making as researchers to other people's lives? What is the economic and societal benefits of our research? Impact defined the good that researchers do in the world. And increasingly, governments around the world are moving towards this definition for impact as a way of assessing researchers working within their territories. It's happening at the moment in China, in the UK, in the US, in Australia. These have been in place, these kinds of measures for assessing impact for a number of years. You, of course, do get assessed based on your publications, but you also are able to quantify the difference that your research makes, the economic and societal benefits of your research in other ways as well. And we'll talk about how you can think about doing this in a minute. But this is research impact. And so now we're going to talk about how you can maximize your impact, how you can drive up your citations, how you can be more effective as a researcher in terms of the difference that you make to other people's research, to other people's lives, to society and to economics, of course, if that's something that your research feeds into. I encourage you to think about checklists and think about ways in which you, as a researcher, can enhance your impact over the course of the whole of your research projects, rather than just thinking about this after your papers get published. This is what most researchers do. Of course, they only think about making an impact with their research after the paper gets published, after the paper appears in 
the journal. You can do so much more. You can do things during the research. You can do things on an ongoing basis as well after your work gets published in order to maximize and enhance your impact. So are you doing things as you do research, putting as many outputs online, submitting for posters and speaking engagements, building up a network of people interested in your research. Of course, as the paper comes out on publication, we connect it to other related outputs. We summarize our work for journals, for the media in plain language. And fundamentally, we tell people that we've published. We keep our work alive and we measure, we measure which of our communication tools and platforms have been and are the most effective.